Welcome back everybody. In this video we'll be talking about different problems involving linear equations with two variables. First question here, finding the x-intercept. To find an x-intercept all you need to do is substitute in a 0 for y. We're going to put a 0 in for y. 5 times 0 is 0, so that just leaves us with 2x equals 20. We can divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 10. Our intercept is x equals 10. If we were to graph this equation, it would intercept the, the x-axis at 10. All right, let's look at another one. What's the slope of the line passing through 4, 4, and 5, 7? Well, we need the slope formula to make this work. y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. We can go up here and label x and y, x and y, but label them the first point x1, y1, the second point x2, y2. All right, 7 minus 4 all over 5 minus 4. See how I put the corresponding points here? 7 minus 4 is 3. 5 minus 4 is 1. So our slope here is 3 over 1, or just 3. Now if we were reading this as a direction, the line goes up 3 and to the right 1. That's kind of how to think about this. All right, let's look at another one involving slope again, another slope problem. What's the slope of the line passing through negative 3, negative 4, negative 2, negative 9? All negatives. Let's go through and label first. x1, y1, and x2, y2. Our slope formula just says in the previous problem, negative 9, the y2 number, minus the y1 number, minus negative 4, the x2 number, negative 2, minus the x1 number, negative 3. Now subtracting a negative is really like adding a positive, so we'll make that adjustment here. Negative 9 and 4 make negative 5. Negative 2 and 3 make a 1. So this slope is negative 5 over 1. If this is look, looking at it as a direction, the line goes down 5, right 1. This can also be written as negative 5. Now we're going to do a little graphing. Graphing y equals 2 thirds x plus 1. Well, this follows the formula y equals mx plus b, which is slope intercept form of a line, easy to graph. We start out with the b number, the b is the y intercept. We put a dot there at 1. 2 over 3 tells us what direction to go. If I have a slope of 2 thirds, I go up 2 into the right 3 from any given dot. So up 2, 1, 2, right 3, 1, 2, 3. Here's the other dot of the line. I now will make a line that goes through both of those points. That is how this graphs. Another graphing tool to use, go to desmos.com slash calculator. It's a great graphing tool for graphing linear equations. Again, that's desmos.com slash calculator. Let's graph another line. Same thing. Remember the formula. Y equals mx plus b. m is the slope number. b is what we call the y-intercept. This time we cross at negative 1. Put a dot right here. And 1 over 4, meaning go up 1 and to the right 4. Now if it was negative, we'd be going down. Positive means the slope always goes up. Up 1, right 4, here's that other dot. Make a straight line going through both of those dots, like so. Put little arrows on the end just showing they go off in either direction to infinity. Here's another graphing problem. However, this is not in slope-intercept form, so we're going to do a little bit of work to make it in slope-intercept form. We rewrite it first. 2x plus 4y equals 12. I'm going to try to get y by itself. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Notice I really can't subtract 2x from 12. So I'm going to write it like this. 4y equals negative 2x. I'll write that first. 
and then plus 12. Then we'll divide everything by 4, because we want to isolate the y. Getting y by itself is the key to putting an equation in slope-intercept form. y equals negative 2 fourths, that reduces to negative 1 half. x plus 3, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Our y-intercept is 3. I want to put a dot at 3 on the y-axis. Negative 1 over 2 says I'm going to go down 1 and to the right 2 from any given dot. Down 1, right 2 from any given dot. Connect those two lines with a straight line. I'll move that up a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Two arrows on the end signifying it goes off in either direction. Notice this has a negative slope, negative one-half, and it's sloping down from left to right. All right, a couple more problems here. What's the slope-intercept form of the line passing through 1, 6, and 4, negative 3? All right, well, first let's find the slope of this line. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Here's our x1, y1. Here's our x2, y2 negative 3 minus 6 all over 4 minus 1. Negative 3 minus 6 is a negative 9. 4 minus 1 is 3. That simplifies to negative 3 over 1, also known as just negative 3. Now let's go to our y equals mx plus b. We know what the slope is. The slope is negative 3. I'll put that in for m. Now I'm going to be solving for b. I can figure out b by substituting in y and x. You can use either point for y and x. I'll use the first one, since it seems to be a little bit easier with all positive numbers. 1 for y, x to 6 for y. 6 is equal to negative 3 plus b. Simplify negative 3 times 1. I'm now going to add 3 to both sides to get b by itself b is going to equal 9. I can now write the equation in slope-intercept form. I know the m number, and I know the b number. I can now write it y equals mx plus b with a negative 3 in for x, and 9 is the b number. Y negative 3x plus 9 is the graph of the line. If you want to see what the graph looks like, graph it on scratch paper or use desmos.com slash calculator. Look at this problem. A line has a slope of four-fifths and a y-intercept of negative two. What's the equation? Okay, so mx plus b, y equals mx plus b, our slope-intercept form of a line. The m, the slope, is four-fifths. I'll put that in for m. The y-intercept is negative two. That's the b number. And I'm going to leave everything else alone. The y equal sign and the x. y equals 4 fifths x minus 2. All right. Finally, line passes through the point 2, negative 1, and 4, 5. Which equation below is the line? Okay. <clears throat> well, we can follow the steps before and create a line in slope-intercept form and then match it to this, but we have to do a little um, we have to move some things around. Another way is to test each point, this x, y, and also this x, y, one at a time, in the equations and see which equation satisfies both points. Alright, uh, let's try, um, let's try C. Let's just give C a try. Alright, we're going to try the first point. I'm going to put in 2, negative 1, so we have 3 times 2 plus 5 times negative 1. Does that equal 13? Say negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, and 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. So I have negative 6 and negative 5. Does that equal 13? No, it does not. So I know C is not going to work. We can exit that out. Uh, let's next, let's give A a try. Let's see if A works. All right, uh, negative, we'll try the first point. Negative 3 
times 2 plus the negative 1. Does that equal 7? See, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And negative 1, does that equal negative 7? Nope, that seems to equal positive 7. So A doesn't work. All right, let's try D. Negative 3 times 2 plus 5 times negative 1. equals negative 13. Is that true? Okay, we have a negative 6 and a negative 5. Yes, that equals negative 13. Now it has to work for the other point as well. All right, let's try the other point. Negative 3 times 4 this time. Plus 5 times 5. Does that equal negative 13? Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. 5 times 5 is 25. Ah, that's going to equal positive 13. This is not true. All right, so maybe B works. And if it doesn't, then none of them will work. And sometimes that happens. All right, trying this on the first point. Negative 3 times 2 plus a negative 1. Does that equal 17? Now, negative 6 minus 1 does not equal 17. So it turns out that none of these satisfy. Remember, for it to work, it has to satisfy both of them. All right. I hope that this video helps out. Better understanding of linear equations with two variables. Thanks for watching.